Look, I'm sorry. We, we almost weren't ready for the show, which is very unusual when Vantion's not here to delay us. But he popped in during the week and he left notes all around the studio telling us what we needed to do. And we've been trying to find them all. Harry's note reminded him about the need to manage his condition. And, well, he did, he did manage to apply the cream, but, uh, but I think he had far too much fun doing it. There's a note stuck to Norma's pan saying, use in case of emergencies, or if Chicks does one of his puns. Vantian has stuck a note on the studio window saying, um, can someone please pick up my second best leather armor from the dry cleaners and check that they've got that oddly colored stain out before I can return it to Wanda's rental department. Hmm. Uh, he's also put a note on me, a script that reads, um, more references to Gary Hogan, please. Ugh. And, and and there's one by this red light that I I, I just can't decipher this. Uh, Norma, can can you read his handwriting? I mean, w what is that scribble? Um, is Olive? Oh, oh, Mike's alive! Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hutton Orbital Live. I'm your host of this evening, the one and only Harry Balzac. Uh, Vantian has been in Sofia for the last couple of days and, quite frankly, he should be ashamed of himself. Uh, joining me tonight is the singular Wilma Fingerdoo. Good evening, Harry. The titular ap apology officer, Mia Harkness. What did you call me? It, it means you've got a title that describes what you do. Oh, sorry. We have the... By Philar, Juan Care. Come again? Having two filaments, you, you, your moustache, see? Ah, uh, you're grasping at rhyming straws, you are. Uh, quite possibly. And, of course, the fistula normus knockers. Don't you start with that filth. Stand still while I beat you some more. It means slender, like a reed. Oh, bugger, better have some headlines. Offline because of Mr. Dusty? Well, that sucks. Calmer down, calmer down. And with one bound, she was free. This is an ex limpet. It has expired and gone to meet its maker. But why aren't we permitted? It appears to be kicking off. All the latest news from your community-led events. combat signal metaphorically shone into the metaphorical sky this week as the partly harmless but mostly deadly scourge of the planetary settlements and the only person to use firing a rocket launcher as a standard emote was temporarily hors de combat. Get your minds out of the gutter it means out of action due to injury or damage. As Flossie's communications array succumbed to what we can only assume was a Mr. Dusty virus planted by one of her myriad enemies. Me interwebs gone came the plaintive cry from the heart of Flossyland. NPCs throughout the galaxy breathed a sigh of relief and took time for a much needed respite from the whirlwind. Campfires were built, songs were sung and bottles of alcoholic liquid of dubious province were passed from hand to hand in the flickering light of a burning apex taxi. The fighters, those people whose name Flossie never has time to learn before they lie crushed under her heel as she strides across the wasteland, and, and yes, yeah, she knows it's wasteland because she laid waste to it. The cannon fodder that is brought in the wave after wave of hopeless defiance, or the League of Red Shirts as they are known, were preparing to declare Tuesday as a public holiday, when an awful cry was heard. 
she's back! By bouncing a signal off of a nearby neutron star and a few techie tips from Floor Mopping Guy, you know, the man has many skills, Flossie was able to resume her onslaught on the bad people of the galaxy. Pan in hand, Hutton truck at the ready. Trembling, the red shirters put down their copies of Gullnet News, stubbed out their Kamitra cigars, donned their helmets, all except the hapless individual who tried to wear a real pumpkin, and started scanning the horizon warily. It is said that cargo handling crews quake when Flossie's CG hauling machine approaches, and whole settlements take themselves offline just to save themselves the pain. Which explains the buried caches of power regulators near dark settlements. The suppliers of space legs have much to answer for, as the once mostly harmless, and I only got that because someone bumped into me and blew up, gentle pilot, who wouldn't say boo to a mollusk, has been transformed into someone that Genghis Khan, due to a recent accident with a time machine and an online translator, called my hero. Of course, no one is irredeemable. And with her alter ego as a fuel rat, there are many people who rely on the Pilots Federation's favourite and breathe a massive sigh of relief as Flossie's ship, the Panhandle, took off in search of, uh, well, either someone praying for help or at least someone who'd soon be prey themselves. Wherever you are in the galaxy, if you need help, if you know the Flossie signal and you can afford the phone call, maybe you can hire the F-Team. Go on. You know you're in safe hands. Intergalactic breeder of clones, the snake meister King Hanky, has once more been telling tales out of school and asking if anyone who listened how to spell Schadenfreude and paradoxically how many O's in Poo Poo Head as he wallowed in the very minor discomfort of his arch-nemesis, Rampage. Yes, the discomfiture was small. We don't mind telling you at this juncture, as this is not one of those items designed to move you to the edge of your seat. So please feel free to sit back and enjoy your megagin as we continue. This all started as the soon-to-be slightly inconvenienced Rampage was hitching a lift in Valaran's ship. And as it approached the landing pad, Valaren declared that he was just popping out for a more, then apparently made use of an escape pod. He wasn't on board, the ship was still in flight, and he wanted to follow me, so you explain it. Rampit sat down and watched as the autodoc managed to land the ship in the right place, and the right way up, so he thought his luck was in. However, Valaren hadn't asked for the ship to be moved to the hangar. And, as far, and it's far too dangerous on an exposed landing pad for you to be allowed to go walk about. So Rampage had no choice but to wait. And wait. And, well, you get the idea. Once he'd eaten all the snacks on board, checked Valaren's browsing history and put the tea cosy on his head, Rampage was reluctantly forced to realise that more might not have been short for moments, but momentous amount of time. And not wanting to see what happened when the toilet paper ran out, Rampage used the other escape pod to launch himself in a skittish fashion across the landing pad and at the point he fell asleep. Only to wake up just outside the lifts, so that was lucky. So there you go, no big deal. Next time Hanky says the sky is falling, it's probably not even worth looking up. Not even with one eye. Hutton Orbital would like to extend our sincerest congratulations to Commander Sally, who has managed to escape from the underground secret laboratory where a distant relative of the dastardly Don, known as Haphazardly Ron, had been keeping her captive for several weeks. Having passed all of these scurrilous tests devised by her captor, Sally decided that it was time to make a break, and she managed to make a life-size replica of herself out of papier-mâché during art class to distract the guards, and succeeded in cutting and pasting all of the good luck cards together to make a rope, in the course of which she only glued three fingers together. Sally threw the rope up to the escape hatch and climbed hand over hand, inch by inch, uh, 
For listeners in locations that have adopted base 10 for their measurements, that's 2.54 centimetres by 2.54 centimetres. Until Sally had one last fight. It was boss level time. Luckily, she remembered the ancient secret code XYZZY and the door combination up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. And after defeating the boss, she finally reached sunlight and a ride home. Well done, Sally. And all of your friends are here to make sure that you're never captured by that particular fiend ever again. Manticore, or Manticore Munitions, to give it its full title, has been opening up some of its archives recently, showing the prototypes and very early development models of some of the most famous creations, most recently, the Limpet. The early Limpets, which were being displayed way back in the year 2022, were a six-legged robot. The design with six legs didn't last very long once efficient thrusters were invented. The robots were called Scar-E. Historians divided over the pronunciation of this word. Was it Scar-E, meaning the one after Scar-D, or was it Scary? As the sight of a six-legged robot plummeting to the ground overhead would deserve such an epithet. Or was it Scary, as a tribute to the first and last example of AI in a garbage collector in that old documentary? Frankly, we think it might be scary, as a small piece of description has survived. They, eventually, they essentially hold onto the side of the asteroid for dear life as it screams through the solar system. Today's limpet is a far cry from those primitive devices. They're a multi-purpose, highly configurable wonder of modern technology, able to turn its hand, as it were, to anything. But this, is come, this has come at a cost. AI is of course banned and for good reason, but Manticore have managed to have limpet controllers that can take a nascent limpet and program, or imprint, the required response into the limpet with the necessary personality to tackle the job efficiently. But there's a flaw. The homing instinct in these personalities is necessarily strong, but it almost leads to a crushing fear of abandonment Coupled with the short-term memory of a forgetful goldfish, it means that the moment it realises that it can't see you anymore, it gives up totally and self-destructs with a small, angst-ridden cry that is only audible to other limpets of, Mummy! So next time you're mining or gathering up black market goods floating in space and cursing the loss of the payload that went with a quietly expiring limpet, spare a thought for the limpet controller who's just lost one of their offspring, and you better hope that there isn't a rising of the machines after the heartless way that you left those limpets abandoned outside when you close your cargo hatch and bug it off to another part of the galaxy. Regular listeners will know that Hutton does not often delve into the murky world of speculation and rumour, preferring that all of our news is solidly based upon fact. Sometimes, though, there really is no choice. Permit lock systems and areas. Speculation has recently been revived about Polaris, Lave 2, and Call 76 specifically. Why are they locked? What's so special about these three? Do they hold hidden treasures, or are they just a pain in the flight suit for explorers and fleet carrier owners? Well, the Pilots' Federation has, as always, been staunchly silent on the subject, and even when a representative has been cornered, and the question is pressed upon them, they have been known to point out the window and say, Look, a three-headed monkey! And try to blend in with the wallpaper, pretending that they're not in the room. The level of evasiveness has in itself led to speculation about why they won't ask answer questions about the speculation. Have they forgotten where they put the key and are just too embarrassed to admit it? Or perhaps they've locked themselves out of those areas and all the documents about why are still locked in there along with the keys and their shopping list for the weekend. Or is it the Commander Braben that's playing a gigantic game of hide and seek and is still located in one of them with a blanket over his head and counting to 100 in Thargoid? If you've ever tried this, you'll know why he has to rest his vocal cords for a month after saying each number. Lave 2 has of course long been suspected to be a retirement home for authors where they can sit in a circle round a fire fueled by the remainder books and talk about how it was all better back in their day. 
and the power map lock means that they're not being bothered by any of the goings on in the galaxy. And of course, the galaxy's not being bothered by them, so win win, we say. And Polaris, well, Galactic Mega Corporation Slush Fund Depository, OBS. There is much more to talk about in the BGS as several systems have entered adverse states during the week. We have two wars, both of which we can happily ignore, a persistent outbreak, and a case of blight which we can't. More on those stories coming up. Occupying its usual spot at the bottom of the Hutton Systems table is Barnard Star on 32%. In addition to being a bit rubbish, and just when there are no conflicts in the system, Barnard Star is now also hampered by an infrastructure failure, one of three currently active in the system. Clearly, the other factions have been buying their critical equipment supplies from the same dodgy characters. So ship in water purifiers and power generators to relieve the situation and open up the commodities markets. Epsilon Eridani is still suffering from an outbreak which has been running for a week, stagnating the system onto 38. Ship in meds to any of the three stations with large pads and make yourself a tidy fortune in profit. Epsilon Indy steady climb into the 40s halted last week and the system is just dipping below 40 again. AVIC has gone a second week without conflict, but there has been some turbulence in its influence levels which currently sits on 40, with Sirius still in second place. Another system in which Sirius sits in second place is Alpha Centauri, which has been afflicted by blight in the past couple of days. Fleet carriers have been stopped with agronomic treatment, so get your cargo pythons over to Aldin or Hutton and offload their cargoes to relieve the blight. We sit on 47, 25 points clear of Sirius, but that will reduce if we don't address this quickly. Last of this week's problem children is Leuton 145-141, which is suffering a terrorist attack. Sell legal weapons to the system authority or assist in clearing the system of pirates. Well done to the combat truckers who quickly cleared the pirates from LP525-39 last week. The system has now recovered to 43%. At the overachieving end of the Hutton Systems table, we have six systems above 60% and one hag hole on 70. Remember, don't boost or dump data into systems that are above 60%. As trailed last week, Operation Jump to a Dump, took us into the LP715-52 system, which is home to the Earth Defence Fleet and the Roughnecks, to whom we are happily losing the war on entry. Priorities this week are, if you want to truck something, clear the outbreak in Epsilon Eridani, the infrastructure failure in Barnard Star, and clear the blight in Alpha Centauri. If you want to shoot something, clear the criminals out of Leuton 145-141. Community-led events are the perfect way to spend time with like-minded people or to try something that you've not done before with someone at the helm to guide you. This week we've heard from The Nexus Initiative, Trip Omega, Does the Sun Still Rise in the East in the East, Buckyballers, uh, Buckyballing I suppose, Five Euro Tours and a reminder of the upcoming At the Eldritch Gate. Links will as always be posted in Twitch chat and also in the descri description of the YouTube upload. Commander Caboose has started the process which might well be termed the Gary Hogan is dead, long live the Gary Hogan, as he explains. The Gary Hogan has completed the decommissioning process and is awaiting transfer to a suitable facility for refitting with modern conveniences that a, that a new pilot requires, such as seats, before being reinstated and setting off for its voyage into the black. Meanwhile, the Legacy continues to raise funds to support the Gary Hogan on its quest into the unknown. The Legacy will be hosting an event in a few weeks to help new commanders learn the game and teach profitable trading techniques to help young commanders learn how to make their way in the galaxy we call home. Trip Omega is going through more phases than the teenager. But they've saved the last be they've saved the best for last, as Commander Radium explains. Just five days ago, Titan Contractors' final phase for our biggest expedition trip yet began. 
Departing from Sagittarius A, Phase 5 will take us on an exploration-focused journey back to the bubble, stopping at numerous nebulae along the way. While we encourage commanders to go out and explore, we're also happy to be running our largest trip challenge yet, with a whopping reward totalling 4 billion credits split across 4 different winners. Commanders on our journey are partaking in these challenges by submitting amazing screenshots, so we hope to have some awesome views by the end of this trip. Phase 5 will conclude on the 5th of June, bringing in an end to our expedition trip. To follow our journey, follow us on Twitter at tcon underscore feed or check out our Discord and website for more info. Fly safe! Commander the Presence is back, and so is that word. It's does the sun still rise in the east in the east? Week 11. Week 11, and I'm now approaching the Tenebrae sector, and like similar sectors I've visited before, the Errant Marches, the Abyss, the Formidine Rift, the Void, and all the other popular holiday destinations far from the bubble, it's a very... um... a restful place with very few stars and even fewer things happening. Bearing this in mind, I thought I'd have a recap of the sectors I've already passed through to get here and the one feature that was most noteworthy. While still in the inner Scutum Centaurus arm, the expedition had the Peng, my favourite nebula, a mine of point of interest so it would be remiss of me if that wasn't my standout feature here. From there to the galactic core and the last time I saw a Vista genomic shop on Commander Winterwalker's carrier, the Forge 308. I dread to think how many space cabbages I've counted since and if anyone has a method I can find out how much data I have to hand I have to be handed in, I'm all cauliflower ears. And onwards to the Empyrean Straits where I was shaken to find a Thargoid sensor, far, far from anywhere I had deemed even remotely near their sphere of influence. In the Trojan Belt I had the fantastic find of an unnamed planetary nebula, which, if I was naming it, it would be called the Septic Fire Ant Nebula. And finally, to the penultimate sector before the edge of the Milky Way, Dryman's Point. What will I remember most about here? Well, I can thank Norma Snockers for pointing out my love of a new word, which prompted me to make this little ditty about the sector. One peduncle, two peduncle, three peduncle, four. Five peduncle, six peduncle, seven peduncle, more. Hopefully, I'll see you all next week. Oh, seven. The latest Buckyball race on the rocks it's now over, but when we asked Commander Turner for an update on the final results, he grumpily slurred something about being down in 8th place and blooming hot shop new pilots and don't they know who I am, followed by a crash and the sound of breaking glass. Hopefully he'll have picked himself up off the floor in time for the next race, Seven Sisters Speedway, which starts on the 11th of June. As compensation, we're going to show a video that celebrates the many adventures to date of the Buckyball races. Edited, composed and voiced by Commander Toko Sob. The Mischief Mile, the Art of Panamonium, the Kessel Run, a bootlegger challenge, total recall, a turbo out Buckyball, the ice school truckers, real man racing, later hoser. Such a twat that you're holding back when the clock is ticking. The race is on and adrenaline's winning. One percent power is the only way to do a bucket ball race. Ain't no time for worrying. But how fast, better dead than slow. It's a bucket ball race. So give it some boy. Oh. Time to go.
Commander Hunter is nearly ready for departure. He's put a note out for the milkman, boarded the cat with friends and double checked that all of the doors are locked. The new expedition from Five Euro Tours is raring to go, returning to Colonia and Sagittarius A with Return of the Journey, journey to the Centre of the Milky Way. I hope he's arranged for someone to pick up his mail because this is a 12 week trip. Hello everyone, with less than a week to go, the Five Euro Tours expedition is still open to everyone. Will you join us on this 12 week long amazing sightseeing tour? Then sign up and join us on Discord. And finally, a repeat of last week's invitation from Commander Richard Fluminos M and at the Eldritch Gate. There's still two months to go, but if you wanted to organise a group, you might want to start thinking about it. There is a tale bordering on legend that occasionally gives you a feeling of deja vu. That goes, seven years ago, Commander Kelly Eldridge discovered a remarkable find that everyone is familiar with today. The rare and elusive green gas giants. Nobody had seen anything like it before and many commanders wondered in awe if there would be more planets like it somewhere in the galaxy. Unfortunately, for unknown reasons, the discovery was lost to time. Mainly as Kelly Eldridge died herself in the brief but deadly Cerberus Plague, which coincidentally happened right after she returned on a badly beaten ship with no comms enabled. Multiple expeditions and efforts have been made throughout elite history to discover this elusive planet, most of them unsuccessful. However, the Independent Explorers Association has come in possession of two pivotal objects that might prove a difference in the finding of the gas giant. One, a map of the region where Commander Kelly Eldridge navigated herself before returning to the bubble to her demise, which is the region modernly known as Vulcan's Gate. Number two, a high resolution photograph of her find with celestial object references, that picture in the eye of the experienced explorer can make this search possible. The IEA is inviting groups, squadrons and associations to apply, as every group can bring their fleet carriers and make a home base on the POI map that will be provided. To complete the expedition, simply visit every single one of the POI and take the bus truck carrier back and check out in the IAA's designated midpoint POI towards the bubble. The region is based on the map of Commander Kelly Eldridge, so every POI is an excellent point to survey around. If you fancy joining but don't have a group, never fear. 
you can always explore as an independent as part of the Independent Explorers Association Book Force, which represents all explorers without being subjected to a squadron. Just sign up in the roster and you will be part of the IEA for this expedition. This expedition starts July the 12th, so you have time now to talk to your squadron, your friends, and see if you can submit a team to try to discover this lost world. Know of an event that we've missed? Then you know what to do. Email I took part at hutnorbital.com and put us right. And that's part one. Oh, oh. no. Oh. Gary Hogan. Mm. I went to school with him. This one time, right, he was in dinner hall and he shoved the whole fly's graveyard into his mouth at once. Then he sneezed and a current came down his nose. Actually, they, they made him eat face in the wall after that. That's not Gary Hogan. That's Gary Baldy. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm always getting them mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, whilst well, we start off, we're gonna we, while we chat for a bit. I'm just gonna put this video on in the the background. This is the talented Beetle Jude uh, doing a, fulfilling a, a raffle prize for the the recent uh, uh, charity stream that was done by a whole load of people at the weekend, where they raised nearly eleven thousand pounds. Radio Seven Operation Whoa. Warbucks charity stream. Nice. Yeah, it's 16 streamers in 56 hours. So this is um, uh, basically it's a screenshot that uh, Koso, oh, Tom Cook did. Uh, and uh, he one of the things he did was uh, he's got a new album of elite um, tunes, which he uh, he released at that. And so this is this is Jude now doing a, a, a drawing as a raffle prize. On, and it, it doesn't look like anything that first thing. How can you... I don't know, I'm not very arty myself, but I just kind of wonder how she sees a picture in that. And then it... At the end, it's just amazing. And we say, at the start, can, it looks can like you see what it is yet in something that is not yes. an Australian accent? No, yes. Yes, you, very you, much not an Australian accent. You know how you get the voices in your head? Well, Jude gets a picture in her mind. That's yeah. the same, same thing, but eyes eyes in your head instead of ears in your head. Do, do, the, do the pictures tell her to go and kill everyone? <laughs> well, if they don't, they're not the same as the voices in my head. <laughs> <That's> Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so, Karen, this yeah. is this is five minutes worth. So, don't, but just let it go in the background whilst we chat. That's it. Look at look yeah, at I'm that mesmerized. Mm. Yeah, I know it's. Yeah. But it's not very good radio, is it? No, it's not. That's true. So, it's not very it's good not, radio. But then it's not just radio. No, I know, but it will be for the for people on the podcast. You see, oh, oh it's well, there's a lovely people. pretty picture. Mm. Yeah. If you're reading the script, you can't see Jude doing her art. So, yeah. We just need a screen. So we're all talking place. about something that nobody's going to see if they're listening on the radio. Yeah. Mm. Well, this is true. That's why we need to talk about something interesting. Look mm. at the colours. Oh, wow. Ooh, so wow. much colour. She's, oh, yes. she's building that up in layers okay. as well. Look. So, mm. What happened today? Layers, what happened like today? Layers. What, what, once every yeah, layers two like weeks. an onion. An onion has layers. Imagine if David listens on the podcast, because if you say, yeah. oh, look how that green's going and that mm. brown's going, mm. anyone have a clue what you're talking about mm. anyway. Yeah, so that would that, be great. Yeah. That slightly lighter grey against that slightly darker grey. Yeah. But he wears it well. Yeah. He does. He, at least he knows when he's got red on him. That's the important thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't say, I've got grey on me. He's got, he's, he's got a colour. In all fairness, he's not really sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, red no. red comes with pain. Yeah, mm. that's what, Yeah, it doesn't feel that. That's why he always <laughs> takes a colour swatch with him. Just yeah. to compare and go, hmm, yeah, it might be orange. Maybe. Oh, no, it's red, it's red. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's more of it. <laughs> have I spilled my drink or have I cut myself? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what ha go. what happened today? So we had we had the frontier fortnightly live stream, didn't we? we did. mm, yeah. yeah. So uh, no sign of Arf this week. Um, now that's because he's that's he's probably still got. Is he still over having his stag do, or has he come back and they're holding onto his head? <laughs> I don't, I don't he's, know. He's, he's getting he's, his hair done. He's getting a shaggy perm. Yeah, because they did go off to America for his stag do. He's already got one of those. Oh, mm. it's, it's on his it's on his chin though. Um, so he delegated to the younguns, um, Zach and Bruce. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but then when uh, later on Tom Kuehl came on as well, one of the developers, and mm. Razors 
Where have all the razors gone? That's a made-up name. Do you see make him sound cool? Yes, no. it's, it's, <laughs> it's... It said on the bottom of the screen, Tom Kewell. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, it's supposed to sound so cool. It's, there's designer stubble and there's... It's, I'm too lazy to have a shave in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. anyway. Young people. So, to, <laughs> so it was uh, Frame Shift Live number eight. So you can't really... Ooh. I'll glean too much from that because now the bi-wigglies you can't even calculate when they started but um, it was the do you know what today is yeah it was it's the star, start of all the salt season it's the one year anniversary of obviously coming out that's enough. Uh, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Stop it. Oh. Stop it. It's a public. Do you? Uh, happy birthday, dear Odyssey. Happy birthday to you. God, there's already people in the chat complaining their ears are bleeding before that started. <laughs> um, and many more. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the usual, the usual stuff. Mm. Got Twitch drops. So if you haven't got purple gear, I, God, you haven't got purple gear yet. Where have you been living? Mm. See, this somewhere? is the problem. I want to get purple gear for my my Odyssey commander, but I can't get purple gear. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm always at work when the stream's on, and I can't go home in time. Okay, you're not streaming on your phone or something. No, no, but I am. No, no but I am. The no. the the walls are. Sandstone. Ask Sean thick. to automate it. He needs to automate your PC <laughs> yeah. from yeah. his chair. Yeah, I can automate do that. me, Sean. No, oh, I've done that. Sort of, I've done that sort of thing before. Yeah. 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 Mm. So um, the, this week, so it's it, it's pointless me really saying this, but this was the last chance to get those spring paint jobs. So it'll presumably next time they're going to go on to uh, summer paint jobs. Yeah. But you, yeah. what you've written in the script here is last chance to get spring PJs. Paint jobs. Oh, not... <laughs> oh, I am so <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> <Not> pajamas. <laughs> Who wears pajamas? I thought in we the were going to get PJs. <laughs> no, PJs no, everybody's going to be disappointed now. Uh, no, I want, I want PJs. I want spring PJs. <laughs> sort of pale. I didn't even know they did them in seasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, wear one, you wear one set through the winter with... and then another set <laughs> the next winter. Oh, just you like wear pajamas. Puffled all the winter. daffodils. I'm just so disappointed now. Anyway, the, what was the big big news? Is update 12. 12. I can't remember. Dan, Dan. Oh, it's, hang on. it's here. That's, that's the one. Seamless. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to go to the other end of the room for that much? Ago. Anyway, yeah. update 12 is going to be yeah, around the end of May. Didn't mm -hmm. a specific date, but, but the end of the month. And we're one way down the 19th. So I'm not long mm -hmm. to wait. And mm -hmm. what's in update 12? Well, you should tell us. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, there's Think. stuff, things to do whilst you're sitting down. No, things to do yeah. while you're seated. You can't do it while you're sitting down. Oh, you're, you're sitting, sitting down, down, for goodness sake. <laughs> uh, is... Nothing wrong with sitting down. Yeah, but you're in the process of sitting no, down. No, you're, you're sitting down. down. You're sitting I'm down. A... I am sitting down now. It's not oh. to do whilst you're on your Are ass. you or are you seated? I am sitting down now. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. now you're seated. You're seated. <laughs> No, I'm sitting down. No, you sat down. You're now seated. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, no, it's it sitting down. So sure. Up. Right. Yeah, but so, you don't even know when your dinner is. So I mean, so it's, it's, thing, you're a year confused. ago, <laughs> a year ago, you <laughs> all went, ooh, we can yes. all stand up, and yeah. now a year on, we have to go, ooh, we can all sit down again. Well, After yeah. being sat down for what seven years yeah. before that. Yeah, was, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But now, when you're in a chair, you can get your wheel out. I don't know what. <laughs> Yes. Pardon? When you're you in your chair, little, you get your wheel out. Yeah. You get your little menu wheel out now whilst, when you're sitting down, when you are seated. Um, mm. you can, you'll be able when to, sit, no. when you sat at the bar, <laughs> be able to talk to the bartender. <laughs> and if you have a fleet carrier, uh, yes. Know, uh, yeah. They... Of us have got, uh, some of us have got fleet carriers. Um, you know, you go on the bridge and you've got that big sort of. Uh, Command chair up on up on the raised platform that doesn't have a no. desk or anything or anything in no, front I of could, you. I couldn't go into that. Or nothing to brace <laughs> yourself against because they always brace themselves in, in space, don't they? Um, the little tablet next to you um, that just had some random graphic on it. You know, like the random graphic when you come in the lift and it tells you how many accidents you've had that week or whatever it is. I'll never look at no, it. No, I need to watch start watching for that. What if yeah, you go in the lift in the in the stations. 
thought he's got no. a staff. Oh, it's always sophomore oh, wall, but it's the same on every single wall throughout the whole galaxy. Yeah, yeah I know. It's a well, remarkable well, coincidence. Like that. Yeah. Anyway, that that little that little tablet you can now do fleet carrier stuff on it. So it's uh, they've introduced that as an interface. Oh. I'll, anyway, I'll give it a I'll give it a whirl when I'm back on my carrier. Um, stuff you can do. Well, whilst you're seated, standing up, walking around, whatever. Um, black markets um, are going to offer more for stolen goods. So if you're into uh, knockoff gear, and according to the one of the threads on the uh, uh, forums, um, basically we're a bunch of thieving scallywags, or has the galaxy, has Odyssey turned into us in a bunch of thieving scallywags, discuss. It's, uh, it's worth a giggle, worth a read. Um, if you're into knockoff gear sold from a suitcase in the alley up the side of Wonders, then you'll get more dosh for it. And then, obviously, there are no patch notes until uh, update day, because it's not a patch release, I suppose it's a patch. Um, mm. Dozens of minor tweaks, fixes and improvements. And uh, we'll get all that. I don't know whether it's usually Sally that does that, isn't it? Mm. But uh, I think it's asked a couple of times. Um, and detention centres um, we'll have shipyards. Yeah. So you don't did have you to get the taxi. Did you, did ship. You see shipyards. Shipyards. Oh, okay. So in no need to uh, call an Uber to get um, what they call Apex to uh, so, get back. So, to, so really, to is the taxi of shame? Well, apart from paying paying off a fine, there's not really a lot of punishment there, is there? No, hmm. it's just a it's, tiny bit of inconvenience. So mm. it's it's the whole crime and punishment um, balance, isn't it? So you get more for being a criminal, and you can. Get your yeah. own ship. And you only get one set of fines. Mm. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Bring me another suitcase so, of wine. Right. <laughs> so going going back to one of the stubbly ones, uh, Tom Kewell, um, who was the guy who did the, uh, what's he called, the Scorpion, the, the mm. sort of combat SRV. Yeah. Um, he was talking about a new mission time, so they're called raid missions, where you're going to, they'll nominate, if you take the mission, they'll nominate about some important cargo, like like a pallet of mugs or something, in a settlement, and you've got to protect it from waves of omnipol. You know, sort of a, like an open up FBI kind of, um, and they'll they'll sort of attack you in waves. He said it's it's quite challenging, um, and it's probably best suited to groups or teams. So I expect. Uh, Twenty one will be trying this on his own. Mm. Yeah, mm. Gonna you're going to get somebody who'll do it in their own. So you take a mission as sort of a space G4S, you know, and you... Mm. And lose your prisoners. Lose key. Yeah. Lose, yeah, lose your keys. Just, just yeah. stand on all the mugs and bust them. It used uh, to be called G7S, but they lost. Pull the handles <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did anybody get a bit where um, Bruce... Oh, was it Bruce or Zach? I remember now. He said, uh, which, which year... Oh, it was a Tom Kewell, actually. And he says, what year is it? 3304, is it 07? I'm thinking, God, if you don't know what year it is, you, you've got to ask what year it is. Are you unsure? He's like, what year is it? You've got to mean it like Kyle Reese, you know, in, in Terminator. What year is it? Anyway. So what year I, is it? I love, I love the fact that um, you always say, did you see the part? And you know none of us have seen it. I saw it. Yeah, I watched it today. I do saw it. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I mm -hmm. saw well, Palantir in the chat. I saw dead yeah. meat in the chat. Yeah. Um, I made a special effort. What we're saying effort. is, Amelia, the retirees saw it. The people with jobs <laughs> didn't, didn't see it. Right. <laughs> ah. Well, it is the middle of the afternoon UK time. Yeah. 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 So it doesn't clash with Barkin Hunt then, no? Because that's <laughs> on 11 till 12, isn't it? <laughs> no, I don't. Don't watch that. <laughs> oh, Antiques Roadshow or something. Yeah. Starts yeah. It under the under hammer. The ham. Probably yeah. Homes Under the Hammer. Or, Not yeah. four o'clock, so it Escape starts after my nap has finished. So it's, oh, that's yeah. Antiques, Road, Antique, Antiques Road Trip at four o'clock. No idea. Yeah, yeah, as, as, uh, yeah as Happy Mo Moon Monkey was saying about police ships with flashing lights. Nina, Nina, oh, Nina, yeah. yes. Mm. Yeah. What? Um, I want one of those. They played the, just, we, we played the video earlier, obviously, the, um, uh, the, the Tokuso, um, the Buckyball video that was really funny. Um, if you haven't watched it yet and you want to watch it via the link, uh, put I've, the I've done that. On. I've done that. Yeah, put the subtitles on in YouTube because the lyrics are actually quite funny. Um, and it's, it's there's a rudy word at one point. Yes. Yeah, there are. <laughs> <laughs> or two. <laughs> um, the, the subtitled "Real Men Fly in Lederhosen," so that kind of sets the uh, sets the, the theme. Um, 
there were a couple of mentions. The show last week got a mention. As I usually mention. Now, in, I've been so. watching the whole show and I stepped out for ten minutes, and that was the bit when they yeah, I, when they mentioned the show. I saw that. I saw you in the chat going. Have they mentioned us? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they they mentioned Rolf. Um, mm. uh, that we we mentioned in last um, week's show. Um, that's good. And Dead Meat got a mention. Dead Meat yes. did get a mention. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I didn't know they had a crime watch station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, it was in association with last week's CG, and they did comment like, mm, Dead, Dead Meat GF, that's a, that's, I can't be real, it's a well dodgy name. I'm surprised they didn't put asterisks through it like they do <laughs> some, some weeks. <laughs> <laughs> They, they made it through the naming filter, but not through the uh, live stream filter. But anyway, well done, Dead Meat, getting second place in the uh, CD. Oh, second, was it? Yeah. I didn't actually hear the... Yeah, some, was it, it was IJ? Or, there was two initials that came first, and then some Russian name or Cyrillic name that came, uh, came third. Mm. Um, well done anyway, Dead Meat. Mm. And Bruce had a bit of a brain freeze. He had a bit of uh, performance... Uh, Anxiety. <laughs> Anxiety. Yes. Yes. You get tablets for that. Now. He's talking about because, of course, the live stream copies everything that everyone else does, and they cover the news. And now they've got a, a TV screen with a spinning logo that must have taken somebody oh at least four seconds to put together. Mm. Um, but he couldn't remember Beetle Spoon or uh, what the Jews' names. <laughs> so, and the and the um, and the 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 the, 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 the creators. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was it was good, and it was like we we said you know worthy sort of prescient, knowing that there was no news last week, but it it, it filled. I was it was kind of entertained for more than an hour, rather than the usual sort of twenty five minutes of vaguely interesting stuff, and then they play the games. Um, it was well over an hour of of reasonably interesting stuff, and there it is. Make it go. Mm. And I'm going to hmm? don't, mute, mute my mic Don't now. forget the new mission type. Cough. The new mission type? Yeah. What's that? Well, you know, they they, they have these oh. protecting uh, cargo in settlements now. Hmm. Think, a new I mission think... type is in defending important cargo in um, yeah, just... by baddies. You, yeah, you got a stash of drugs or something you've got to look after or some, some mm. used weapons. Yeah. Didn't you, to, to didn't defend you it from that? Omnipol. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chex had mentioned that. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah it's there. Oh. Must have been Sorry, when you. Yeah. Must have been <laughs> one of those times we dropped. We dropped off. Yes. <clears throat> you must have been dunking a biscuit at the time. <laughs> or sit it, sitting yeah. down. Sorry about that. I, yeah, missed, she was, I missed it completely. Yeah, but you sat. Were you sitting down or were you sat down when that happened? <laughs> Seated. Is that somebody yes. you went to school with, dunking a biscuit? <laughs> Not. Yeah. 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 Duncan hmm. McVitie. Duncan McVitie, yeah. <laughs> he lives in the corner for me. He was a rich, yeah. Hor horrible curtains. Um, <laughs> so who, who's, who's put this bit me. about Percy V. Rance? Did you go to school with Percy V. Rance? Yeah. That's how I knew how to spell his name. Um, anyway, whatever it's called, it arrived. Um, it's arrived now an ancient river, the river delta on, context, Ma on context, Mars. This... Con context. Mars. Uh, the Mars rover, Oof. Percy V. Rance has arrived an ancient river delta. Hmm. Uh, and now it's going to start looking for signs. It's Oops. going to start looking for signs of life, like, you know, Chris Packets and toenail clippings and possibly even, you know, I can. what would be really good is if they found a concise history of the Martian people in a USB drive. But, you know, we, we don't know. It's a, it's a long shot, but, you know. Yeah, it's a long shot, but, you know, anything could happen. Um, so what it'll do is it'll take uh, soil samples and things like that, uh, and it'll poop these out as it drives around. And then in a later mission, another thing will come, another rover will come along and pick them up. And then it'll fire them on a wee rocket up sort of into like orbit. A, is it going to leave them in little black bags? And uh, no, it's it's little... <laughs> it's, littered around the Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, there's no trees to hang them off of. No. Yeah. Um, and that'll fire them up into orbit, and then another ship, will, another thing will bring them home. Um and they can look for microbial life and things like that, you know, yeah. or that kind of thing. And the Ingenuity helicopter has been flying ahead and kind of scouting the route for it. It has taken, in the last year, it has taken a year to drive 
seven miles or 11 kilometers for those who think in metric. Sounds like the M25. Yeah. <laughs> but quicker. But it's it's there now. It's where it needs to be, and it's going to start doing what it needs to do. Mm. It's the uh, Jezero crater, isn't it? That's, yeah. Uh, excellent. Um, it was interesting. We, we I missed it um, the last week's show, but uh, one of the photographs that um, Perseverance sent back had in the in the very edge of it, you know, the, it's fairly wide angle lens, so it's slightly yeah. distorted. It looked like a door. It looked like. Oh yeah. Um, Oh yeah, like, a, that. like, yeah. A, yeah. like an entrance to underground bunker. Anyway, they got a bit close. That, now. That'll be a Starbucks, <clears throat> <laughs> an underground Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. But it looked like um, probably door shape, but it was a natural feature. So uh, yeah, go. that's weird. Anyway, it got the conspiracy theorists all a buzz for. Uh, of course it did. This proves <clears> everything <throat> they've ever said. Yeah. yeah. So I'm assuming that link is to the uh, that story. It's the BBC article. Yeah. Yeah, I pasted that to him. I'm not sure. I can't remember. We covered it at the time, but ingenuity was supposed to only last for a very short space of time. Yeah. And you, I mean, you know, we engineers are a bit of a conservative bunch when it comes to design, but this thing's been going now for, it's still like two dozen flights. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things as well that they just keep thinking, well, why don't we use it for this? And why don't we use it for that? And at some point it will break and that'll be the end of it. But yeah, it's yeah. every time they send it up to do something else, it's proven yeah. it's it's worth, you know. But there's always a obviously it's it's risk based as well. So everything yeah. they you know, the longer and longer and longer um flights it goes on, there's always a risk you're gonna leave it up to. Although they, they they get, you know, the building confidence and their ability to to uh, control it as well. So. Yeah. But bearing, I don't, I don't know what the uh, what the signal time to Mars is at the moment. But it's I think it's about nine minutes and something. Yeah, obviously it depends where Mars is and its orbit compared with yeah. us. But you know, you, it's it's not real time. It can't be. No, it sort of has to it's be fake time. Autonomous. I think they kind of yeah. I think they kind of tell it where to go and it works out how to get there itself. You know, you think you get lag on your PC, you mm. know, every now and again playing yeah. a game, but uh, you know, nine minutes while you're. Bringing the chopper into land is a bit. Yeah. Uh, a bit and extreme. if you crash it, think of the respawn. Because oh, yeah, yeah. it respawns to Earth. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Mm, it's not designed to fly in Earth atmosphere. So. You have to grow a new rocket and everything. <laughs> anyway, have we waffled on long enough now? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I think we have. Have we? Yeah. Well, 40, 45 minutes. That's respectable. Yeah. Um. So, is everybody, everyone happy to yeah, yeah. move on? Oh, okay. So, before we hand over to Flossie, and that ghost guy needs to go and change his underwear, we just got time for one of our favourite games. It's Pin the Tail on the Aardvark. Oh, 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 no, oh, 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 <sighs> Aardvark. No. Aardvark. Hmm. I guess we better go over to Flossie and have the CG news then. It's Flossie. It's Flossie. It's Flossie, it's Flossie, and the community goes. Hello, Flossie here with this week's CG News. Last week's CG, Supply Rare Goods for Rackham Celebration. Finished at 0600 UTC this morning just short of tier 3, with 641,460 units collected. And a very well done to our Commander Deadmeat GF for getting second place in the top 10 commanders. And this week's CG is Fight the Kumo Crew. The Kumo Crew Syndicate has engaged in open warfare on the pirate insurrectionists 
gathered in the HIP 10792 system. A recent coup attempt by the Arch Corsair Vidor Trask, formerly one of the senior members of the Kumo Council, has failed. His, fo- his forces were unable to eliminate Delaney and take control of the criminal organisation. The rebels' vessels have, vessels have concentrated in HIP 10792. Trask is commanding a coalition of loyalists, independent pirate gangs and as yet unidentified mercenaries, collectively calling themselves the, De- the Trask Death Corsairs. Despite suffering from some visible wounds as a result of the assassination attempt, Archon Delane broadcast this message. Trask has betrayed all of us and for that I want him crushed. I will pay well to wipe out every single traitor who fights in his name. The Kumo Council faction will reward all independent pilots supporting its operation against the Trask Death Corsairs in the HIP 10792 system, which is being orchestrated from Crimson Exchange. Should the initiative reach Tier 1, the following paint jobs will be made available to qualifying contributors. Top 75% Viper Mark III Pirate Faction Orange Top 50% Vulture Pirate Faction Purple Top 25% Ferdinand's Pirate Faction Red These rewards are cumulative and higher contribution bands will receive the paint jobs from the lower bands. The faction has set out a week-long operation to take control of the system which will begin on the 19th of May. To be eligible for rewards, you must sign up as an active participant before handing in combat bonds at Crimson Exchange in the HIP 10792 system. Please note that if you have any crew members, a proportion of your combat bonds will be automatically assigned to them. These combat bonds will not come towards your personal contribution total and your crew will receive the reward for these combat bonds and they are hand- when they are handed in. The proportion of combat bonds assigned to your crew will depend on their rank. And that's it for this week's CG News. Thank you, Flossie. Now, there are names that are spoken of in hushed tones, in reverence and awe. And there are names that are shouted from the street corners, usually after the words, stop thief. But there's a third type of name. Names that you use in order to try and increase your almost non-existent street cred. Uh, For example, I once met, followed by showing the rash that you got from that encounter. So, it's time to hand you over to my very, very good friends, Beetle Jude and Witherspoon. No, really, they've been to my house and everything. Galnet News Update, 19th of May, 33.08. Pirate King Arkham Delane has appealed for assistance in wiping out the last remnants of the rebels that tried to overthrow him. The rebels, led by Arch Corsair Vidar Trask, fled to the HIP 10792 system, where they're making a stand against overwhelming odds. There seems to be every expectation that the Trask Death Corsairs will be wiped off the face of the galaxy within a week. Delane is offering pirate faction paint jobs for those that participate in the rout, for the Viper Mark III, the Vulture and the Fer de Lance, depending on level of participation. Bonds should be turned in at the Crimson Exchange. As he spoke of his desire to see Trask crushed, Delane showed off new scars that demonstrate just how close the rebels came to assassinating him. Delane's colleague, Arch Corsair K. Valentine, remains unaccounted for. Potential presidential candidate Zachary Rackham has concluded a week of entertaining the movers and shakers who can help him climb the greasy pole to the top of federal politics. 
A spokesperson for Beta Hydro Corporation and Rackham Capital Investments thanked those who'd helped keep the party supplied with exotic goods. Zachary Rackham was reported to be resting after the week-long event, but the Federal Times' financial journalist Brianna Blanco seemed to be relishing her chance to be a gossip columnist as she described the event. First-hand accounts from some of the partygoers suggest this was more like a no-expense-spared holiday. Each attendee was assigned an Achilles Corporation PA961 serving robot as a personal butler, constantly attending to their every whim. An impressive range of beverages, cuisine and various legal stimulants were available. Those who wished to stay overnight were provided with luxurious suites near the peak of Rackham Spire, offering fantastic views of the picturesque landscape. There were exclusive live shows from top performers, including steel dub band Growl and popular singer Kaspar Karma. Exotic entertainers from the Lucinda Nine Spies Agency provided both public and private entertainment, and everyone departed with a goodie bag containing limited edition Jura drives, colonies of Altarian skin, and gambling credit chips for the new. Rackham's Casino, down below in Los Pioneros. The guest list included PR specialist Anya Black River, Soul Today's owner Neve McFarlane, Beta Hydri Corporation's entire board of directors, senior management from half a dozen federal banks and no less than eight independent, liberal and Republican congressmen. How many of these tried to convince Rackham that running for president was a mistake? Um, how many offered their support in hopes of future rewards? I'm sure the old pirate will pursue whichever route offers the greatest opportunity for new treasure. During the past week, Isherwood Station in Novas has been fully repaired and today returned to normal service. Jenny Beckoff Station in Sosong and Lauma Orbital in Didio remain under repair and both require large amounts of various commodities to complete the work. HIP 38225 and Paukumen continue to have an active thyroid presence, but there seems little urgency to eliminate the aliens from these fringe federal and imperial systems. Some voices in the Senate have suggested that the nearby Marlinist colonies may be at risk from thyroid attack. And finally, Professor Palin is reported to have remotely installed firmware updates to the size 5 and 6 corrosion-resistant cargo racks that were handed out as a reward for those who assisted his meta-alloy appeal. These cargo racks are now capable of fulfilling their design remit and carrying cargo, including corrosive Thargoid offal. Okay. Thank you, Commanders Beetlejuice and Wotherspoon, and our legal department would like to reassure you that Amelia's restraining order will prevent her from visit revisiting your personal quarters after the show, and certainly she won't be leaving personal items like she did the last time. She can't afford to keep losing those, as she's definitely on a on, one on, one, one off, and in one in washed kind of stalker. Talking of one off, it's Mia Harkness with the Hutton Helper results. Welcome to the Hutton Helper results. The Hutton Helper results are sponsored by the Hutton Helper, the only third party resource to come with free anti apathy pills which I couldn't be bothered taking. Anyway, this week we have the following events. The getting away from all shield. The othering your stuff. Oh, excuse me, I'm so bored. Othering your stuff on Galby when you're bored the Cup Winners' Cup. The something, something, mission something challenge. The yada, 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 boom, splat trophy. The yada, 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 boom, splat deja vu trophy. The blah 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 passenger thing extravaganza. So, try to keep awake, don't get caught staring out of the window, 
and stop footering with that or it'll fall off. This week's Hutton Helper results are Matt Santius jumped 55,000 light years to come first in distance travelled. Dead meat GF sold 32,000 32, tonnes of, well, whatever it is he sells. Top mission runner is Montgomery Python again with 194 mission points. Alex Zuno handed in 777,777,777 million and 777 credits worth of bounties. Attic 2 handed in 679 million credits of combat bonds. And Sophia delivered 4,000 people to, well, somewhere. I have no idea where. So that's decals this week are for the Mr. Chance, uh, who isn't on the main list but did get it for expiration data cashed in. So, the Mr. Chance should email I took part at huttonorbital.com and arrange to collect their Hutton decal kit, which this week consists of, you know, some stuff. Okay, okay, fine. A sheep's head, two packets of ginger biscuits and a, a welding helmet. That'll do you. Uh, there were no Hutton runs this week. Nobody could be bothered. Just as well, we stocked up in cremola foam, spangles and Hutton shaped fridge magnets. I wonder if we can put in an order for Deliver Wombat. Feed your face or thrown over a hedge or one of those other delivery companies. I mean, we don't really need the stuff. It's just nice to have someone to talk to. I mean, have you seen the locals? Anyway, there is a whole galaxy of stuff out there needing shipped, shot, rescued, looted, repaired, destroyed, bought, sold, squeezed, inflated, bumped, frozen, liquidated, evaporated, and some of it just needs to be held. Also, you could earn yourself a very fetching hut and decal for doing it. I bet you're wondering how you can be a part of that. Well, here's a wee idea. Why not go to hot.fordermark.com and download the sign up for the new Hutton Helper available in three delicious flavours. Let's face it, anything has to be better than forgetting to copy across the end of your Hutton Helper reports. Anyway, that's it from, for this week. Back to Studio 5. Thank you, Mia. I understand that Alex Zuno said that she's going to be taking a break from handing in bounties for a while. So maybe this is the week that people should have a go. After all, no, you only have to be the best. Month. You only have to be the best that week, not the best ever. But someone who's the best every week is Amelia Hawke, and here she is to bring us details of what she's been up to this week. Good evening. This is Amelia Hawke reporting for the Galnet Rares Digest. We try all the galaxy's rarest and most dangerous commodities, so you don't have to. Smoke. It's a primal thing. It takes us back to the earliest days of humanity when we gathered around fires for safety and comfort. And to the days before refrigeration, or vacuum packing, when we used smoke to preserve our food. Incense, herbs and woods have all been burnt to scent our homes and holy places for thousands of years. When European explorers returned to the New World, they brought the Native American tradition of inhaling smoke from tobacco plants with them. And smoking spread like wildfire through Europe. Well, until everyone started dying from its harmful effects, that is. The practice went underground for a long time and it's still illegal in many systems even today. But in the 34th century, there are alternatives to tobacco, which are not harmful to humans. And that's why I'm in Yasso Kondi. This little gem of a system was discovered in the 2500s by the Ling Exploration Clan who settled planet A2. During survey expeditions, they noticed that the local wildlife were partial to nibbling on the broad leaves of a local plant. These animals would then bumble along, chewing leaves, and eventually slump down in a comfortable spot for a rest. Other animals would join them, and together they would lie around eating large amounts of fruit and watching the sky. 
belief seemed to have a calming effect on any animals, which led to the Lings to do some further research. During this research, some smart arse inevitably, inevitably thought of drying the leaves out and smoking them. 17 hours later, once they'd uh, managed to wake up and uh, restock all of the vending machines with lion bars, she described the initial effects of smoking the leaf as being very similar to tobacco and the following effects of uh, being trippy. Further um, experimentation showed that although the leaf did indeed have similar properties to tobacco leaf, it did not have the same harmful effects on the human body. In fact, it had a mild sedative effect and helped reduce the effects of stress, anxiety, muscle pain, and even some neuro neurological disorders. Nowadays, the leaf has been refined to a responsibly farmed product with only limited harvesting. Most of the locals can only boast 50% of Ling lineage, but they cling fiercely to the traditions of the original farmers. I arrive at Wheeler Market and I'm greeted by my guide for today. He introduces himself as Gavin Ling Woodstock. Gavin is a bit shorter than normal with a mop of curly brown hair. He looks young and is full of enthusiasm. We have a coffee and a local biscuit cookie thing as he takes me through the day's itinerary. From there, we make our way to a shuttle bay and down to the planet. The plants are grown in groves rather than fields. The lings prefer this technique as the other plants give their yasso conde leaf subtle variations in flavour and scent, which connoisseurs enjoy. The plants themselves have a distinct reddish purple colour to them. They grow to around one metre tall and have a long broad leaves whose colour fades to a light pink near the edges. The leaves are picked by hand and each plant is left with plenty of foliage for photosynthesis. We hop aboard one of the hover tractors and take a ride with our crop to the processing facility. Although the scale of the place is large, it's actually quite a simple process. Leaves are laid out on sheets across a large lawn area for their initial drying under the local starlight. And from there, they go into large conveyor ovens, which dry them further. And the trick is to dry them enough so that they can be smoked, but not so dry that they catch on fire. The last time there was a fire at the facility, the local economy ground to a halt as half the continent curled up with their duvets and... Uh, watched old 20th century TV shows. I mean, I mean, Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepherd are still big stars here. Snacks had to be shipped in on an industrial scale to keep pace with demand. Even then, the locals got angry about not being able to get their favourites. It was, well, it was just as well no one could be bothered to get up and actually do anything about it. From there, most of the leaves are shredded and they drop into a large hopper where they'll be used as filler. And this is where the binder and wrapper are applied by hand. Boncheros take the filling and wrap them in a leaf known as the binder. Tabaqueros use the prettier leaves from for the wrapper. And I'm mesmerised by watching them rolling the cigars along their muscular tan thighs. One of them introduces himself as Norman Ling McCurdy and asks me if I'd like to try. My first attempt results in disaster, you know, as you'd expect, but um, after a while, I'm starting to get the hang of it. Gavin tells me it's time to head back to Wheeler Market, and, well, reluctantly, I leave. And Norman gives me a case as a gift, and I can see that some of my better efforts are in the case. I don't want them to get mixed up with the other cargo, so I bring them up to the cockpit and lay them on the rear workstation next to, the, next to that vent thing. The atmosphere is quite thick on A2, so although we get airborne quickly, we need every bit of power the shuttle has to break through into space. The engines are running hot, and I'm, I'm sure I can smell something. I mean, Gavin doesn't notice it, but I'm sure there's something. Uh, the cockpit is getting kind of hazy, and even Gavin notices it now. He looks round. Wow. Those leaf cigars you brought are touching the heat exchanger, and they're really smouldering. Yeah, well, we, we, we should do something about that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably be okay, though. Yeah. Cool. This, this spaceship's a very pretty colour. Yeah. Oh. 
Bloody hell! What? What's going on? Damn shit! shit. Uh, Gavin's still asleep and we're about to hit the station. All right. Right. Sorry, don't you bastard. Oh, Jesus, that was close. We almost got smeared across the side of the habitat ring. Well, it's true what they say. The love of the halfling leaf can dull your wits. This is Amelia Hawk reporting for the Galnet Rares Digest. I'm hungry. Our listener will be pleased to hear that the halfling joke has now been banned under the terms of the Geneva Convention and that all copies have to be burned under supervision of UN inspectors. Thank you. <laughs> I've not a sound, sound effect for slap, but I'm getting one ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh. So, who's up for snacks? <laughs> Yay! Yay! I have got a massive one kilo bag of m ms I might just eat all of them. <laughs> Only the brown ones. So they're all brown no, on the keep, inside. Keep the brown ones for you. I'll put them in a I'll put them in a brandy glass, what they did for Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> mm. Take oh, the that, blue ones out. That was definitely very um, laid back there, Amelia, wasn't it? Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes this, this leaf does have that effect. The... And, uh, it's not yes, really very sensible leave. in the, with the dangers of space, is it? Yeah. Not well, at, all. Yeah. at least you wouldn't care. Yeah. <laughs> but it turned it turned the ship a very pretty colour. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think you'll find that's <laughs> your lunch. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Who knew uh, beige could be so lovely? <laughs> and carrot. Right. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> that that was that was nice. So th you think even something as innocuous as that can have a danger? You see, you think this is nice. It's no, it's no real harm. It doesn't build up in the system. I can stop it any time I want. I just don't want to. But it, it, was, nice. <laughs> it was nice. I thought that would be very safe. But of course, mm, you were filling your cockpit, as it were. <laughs> but what I say now. <laughs> oh dear! Oh, we're all seven years old again. <laughs> I hope to reach that one day. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, well, that was fun, wasn't it, boys and girls? Well, we've got no hair, yeah. no teeth, and you're pooing your pants. Yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> but um, but it looks like we're out of script. Yeah. Yeah, we've run out. Mm. And well, we talked to... script, Sean. Hurry up! We two talk... more lines. We talked through everything uh, earlier, didn't we? So I, I don't... Have we got anything else we need to bore the listener with? Or are we going to let them go and watch a movie? Yeah, let's, let's all go and, and watch a movie. some halfling. Mm. Yeah, some halfling leaf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the joke came first, the rest of the story came <laughs> after. <laughs> So, yeah, Van Tien, this is is this just a way of trying to get Van Tien back so he writes the, writes the next? Uh, yeah, rest. yeah, I'm trying to get him back quickly. I don't <laughs> need to do it. The next bad week. news is, he, bad news, he's not back next week. <laughs> oh well, mm -hmm. he is currently, and I was I was writing, and he was in Sofia. Um, he's been in uh, Bulgaria for the last couple of days, but at the moment, I think he's probably uh, somewhere over France, but getting ready to to land at some out of the way airport like Stansted. Mm. It's just when you said he's he's in Sofia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't even know her. <laughs> no, I, I just went when I was writing Who's the Sophia? introduction. Yeah. I just, I just, Somebody just went you went to, to school with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just as I was writing the intro, I thought, oh, that sounds real. I'll put that in. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, thanks to everybody. That was that was great fun and um well done for winning the pin the tail on the Aardvark. That was. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to watch the uh, yeah the show so now. Sorry, what, see what the hell was going on? <laughs> yeah, I have, I have no idea either. I think I'll just leave it as a mystery. Yeah. It's one of the least mysteries that can never be answered. 
I want to know it, where it was pinned. <laughs> on the aardvark. Yeah, aardvark. That, that, aardvark. That, took aardvark. Me, that took me about half an hour today to take the aardvark to Photoshop out the tail, <laughs> make it a separate thing, and then create a movie of moving the tail to put it in the right place. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can't yeah. reveal all your secrets. <laughs> oh, This is... This is these retirees with too much time on their hands. That's way right. too much. Yeah, time. Oh, I haven't got too much time on my hands. Oh no, you've got. Don't have to... enough hours in a day. You've got. Oh, you've got a rocket between... launcher in your hands, Flo. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but there's hours to face, kill yeah. between between bargain hunt and the the frontier <laughs> live stream. There's about three, four hours to kill there. I didn't have back. I don't have telly on during the day usually. Oh, so that's handsome. Yeah, that well, that way lies madness. I think yes. <laughs> but I don't have time for everything I want to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention you, you forgot the word discombobulated in the whole galaxy of stuff that needs done. <laughs> discombobulated. <laughs> yeah, emancipated. Yeah. Eviscerated. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm combobulated. Evis <laughs> yeah, in other words, ending in ated. Disco yeah, discombobulated is a good one. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It is for what you do, yeah. As is recombobulated. <laughs> First time I came across that was in Warcraft. <laughs> right. I think we should let we should let everybody hmm. go. We can chat amongst ourselves. But we've let them go because they're sitting there no, hanging on. No, I don't want to chat with you. Yeah, you. yeah, I've got stuff to do. Yeah, I've got I know what, I, know to do what stuff. I can do. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I know think can... it's time to remove the headset. For the mug. For the mug. For the mug. Too small. The profit margins never really mattered at all. We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today. Super cruising all across the Milky Way. We'll take anything, anytime, and To the sun, swivel like the pilot on the Xbox One. Alvin at the front, you know he leads us well. Trucking across the galaxy, now everybody yells. Follow the back, follow the back. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. Follow the back, follow the back. Now everybody sing the hut and trucker song.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the show. Everyone's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too? Seamless.